Hey, what's up, guys? You're listening to the Comedy Podcast. This is your host, Rick Sheridan, and we've got an awesome episode of the Comedy Podcast for you today, guys. Last Thursday, I was in a place called Ch- Chelsea, and I went there to see a gig, and um, sorry, I'm just tripping out to that YouTube royalty-free music, man. That, can you believe that's free? That is awesome. What was I talking about? Um, oh, yeah, so I went to this gig in Chelsea, and the gig was kind of like in a really fancy hotel. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking like, you know, do I even belong here? Like, I'm just Rick Sheridan from the Rick Sheridan Comedy Podcast. Hello, right? But I'm glad I stuck around because I got to see a very, very funny show by by these guys. These are like the top names in UK comedy at this moment. Simon Benfellow, Simon James, Simon Arthur Simon, and James Simon. And it was like, like they do kind of more like intellectually kind of stuff. So it was funny, but it was also really, really interesting. So I had a chance to sit down with these guys in their hotel room afterwards and talk about comedy, and it's a really, really interesting interview. So I've broken it up into three parts because you know because it's so, so interesting that I wanted it to be you know broken up into three parts. So that's enough of my jibber-jabber. Let's just get right to it. This is part one of the Comedy Podcast. Okay, first off, guys, let me say that I am absolutely and totally and utterly honored oh. that you guys are doing this right now. So thank you so, so much for this. Thank you. Um, for those of you listening in America, these guys are like the real big deal. Oh. They've been on this thing. There's a thing out here called Radio 4. Radio they've 4, done Radio that. 4. They've done other British stuff. Mm-hmm. They've done this. They've done this thing. It's kind of like it's kind of like like their version of American television, but they call it British television. Yes. And they've done that as well because they've got that out here. Yep. So again, guys, it is an honor that you're doing this. So this like, it's going to be, it's just so cool. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Like one of the questions, okay, let me just start. One of the questions that people sometimes ask me hmm. About comedy, because sometimes people do ask me questions too. Like, oh, I, I know I'm just Rick Sheridan from the Rick Sheridan Comedy Podcast. But, no, no, you know, no, it does happen. People do ask me questions. And oh. um, matter of fact, two weeks from now, there's going to be a very special episode of the Comedy Podcast called Rick Sheridan on Rick Sheridan, oh. where I'm going to sit down with myself and ask myself questions about comedy. Mm. And one of the questions that I want to ask myself two weeks from now is this one: mm. Like, what? When did you first realize? That you were funny, that uh, that you were like actually good at comedy. Ooh. Simon, do you want to? I, I think I knew that I was good at comedy. Yeah. Pretty early on, I I I took about three years worth of comedy courses. Yeah. yeah. And I noticed that you know I, I every time I saw I start I said I can't pay another five hundred pounds. I just can't afford it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would tell the teacher that I would say, look, I can't afford it. Yeah. And the teacher would always say, look, you've got a gift. And if you don't pay me 500 pounds, you are squandering that gift. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think right. him telling me to keep paying him 500 pounds, mm-hmm. you know, that was real early on. I knew I must be good in comedy. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, he wouldn't keep asking me for 500 pounds to keep taking the comedy courses. Yeah. What else could it be? So that's, that's what yeah, I knew. And I think yeah. because of that, I had that self-confidence to yes. go on stage and say, I know I'm good because I paid over 10 grand to learn comedy. Yeah, that's a lot of comedy. Well, yeah. you, you should, because most comedy, te- and I teach comedy, and most comedy teachers, yeah. you know, I mean, they, they would tell you, you know, like, I don't want your money. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I would rather not take, I mean, some, there yeah. are some comedy teachers that will take your money and well, say you're funny, keep back. Yeah, you know, well, but, I, it's, it's, I know a few. Well, not a lot, not a lot. It's very rare. Think that's interesting? You ain't heard nothing yet. Check out part two of the comedy podcast starting now. Okay, listen, guys, not to bring the mood down or anything, no, no, but no. another question that I want to ask myself two weeks from now when I sit down with myself is this one. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a little bit embarrassing. Like we, like, we don't want to admit it, but we've all had them. <laughs> so let me just ask it. Like, okay, what was your, like, 
worst ever gig. I don't know. Yes, Simon. Do so you asked me, what is the worst gig in the world for me? I'd yeah. say it's a toss-up between the time I went out and I totally forgot I'm not funny at all. Whoa. You know, usually, I mean, because I'm a seasoned pro now, I know that I'm not funny and I have little tricks, you know, I can deal with that. I can go up and say, oh, is this your first day? To, you know, <laughs> yeah. what do you do for a living? And they do all the work for me. But that was yeah. the one night I went on stage and oh. I'll never forget, it was 500 people in the audience. Oh, wow. And I went up on stage and I thought I could not get the truth out of my head oh, no. I'm not funny oh, and you oh. and you've, if you've been there you know yes. you're, it's, it's mortifying yes. oh, man. Yes, you're on is. stage going I yes. know I'm an utter fraud yes. oh. I should have worked in computers or something mm. I'm dreadfully unfunny yeah. and that was the worst gig I ever had that was in oh where was it don't freeze in Scotland. oh in Scotland yeah. yes. and it was really bad oh, well, I think the worst so gig that I ever had it was a working men's club just outside of Brohampton. Oh, yeah. oh. And the the place was literally on fire. No way. The <gasps> cook had dropped a bit of grease on something and I'm no. not, you know, I'm not Prometheus, so I can't tell you how far it came about. Which is to say the place was literally burning. Oh. I had to go up there and do fifteen minutes as oh. people literally in front of me are being incinerated <gasps> before my very eyes. Oh, okay. Man. I'm trying I'm trying to remember that the bit I have about the, the checkout machines and all yeah. I'm thinking is I wish I could just check out of this game. I might die. Smoke <laughs> but still I survive. But That's good. Yeah, yeah. you do. You have bad gigs all the time. Yes. But the question is, how do you pick yourself and dust yourself up and go on? Yeah. I mean, I did a gig in Broom. Ooh. Do you know Broom just yes. out of Chorich? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it was a, um, the promoter had forgot to bring uh, a microphone. Whoa. No, P no tannoy. Mm. Oh. Uh, no backdrop. Oh. No stage. Oh. No venue. No. No audience. Whoa. And I showed up there and it was like, I've, I've got to go on basically for myself Whoa. on top of a moor in the cold Whoa. and I, you know, it actually turned out I went up there by myself and I talked for an entire hour on the moor to myself and it wasn't that bad. Well, I hope it's not that bad for me when I sit down with myself two weeks from now for a very special episode of the comedy podcast, Rick Sheridan on Rick Sheridan. And what's that, a spaceship? No, Earthling, we are something even more interesting than that. Part three of the comedy podcast starting now. Hey, listen, guys, I hate to do this, but I have to bring the mood down just a little bit more uh, because I have to get controversial here sometimes on the comedy uh, podcast. But one of the questions that I'm really hoping that I ask myself two weeks from now when I sit down with myself and ask myself questions about comedy is like, here's the thing, like with bad gigs, like, you know, as we all know, like sometimes with a bad gig, it's not always our fault. Right. So like. I know this is going to sound controversial, but I just got to ask it. Like, my question is, like, how would you guys deal with, like, oh, I, I just got to say it. Like, how would you guys deal with, like, a bad promoter? Does anyone, or is this too much of a hot potato? Does anyone want to answer? Like, James, like, even, even though you've done this Radio 4 thing, like, I heard that you recently had some issue with, like, some promoter. Like, what, what was that? I was not promoter. The promoter was saying, like, oh, I'm sorry, we don't have any pink champagne on ice. And right. I said, you know the fuck I am, you cut. And I took his head yeah. and I shoved it right to that poster, right with his radio for. Yeah. And he was so obedient mm. from that point on. He was like a little fucking, uh, what, what do they call him in the Raj? The, uh, the Sherpas, you know, the, the little gopher boys. Yeah. You know? Guys. That's how it is. When you get, and I'm not saying this because I want to big myself up, or that yeah. you know I think that I'm special because I'm yeah. already in four, but that it, it does carry that currency. It does. You know, when you're dealing with those promoters, you really know what it's like to be like Lord of the Bitch Boys. Yeah. But that's the thing. Like, where do you get that confidence? Like, was that all Radio Four, or was it because because you've also done these things out here? Like, what do they call them in Britain? The panel shows. Panel shows. Panel shows. Like you've done the panel show. Like, well, so how much of like the panel show? is that is involved with that my first panel show yeah that was the moment i i knew i could walk on water i mm. hadn't tried it at that point I, I think i knew i could walk on water 
was, yeah, it was sometime shortly after the Radio 4 series. That's, yeah. that's when I knew I could walk on water. Now, whether yeah. or not I had tried it mm. was a different story. But once I got on the panel show, that was like, I, I went home that night, I passed by the Thames. We just, we just left the taping. Yeah. I was walking by the Thames, along the embankment, and I thought, now, now's the time. Now's yes. the time. I've just, I've just done my uh, first ever panel show yeah. with the legendary Frankie Boyle. Yeah. I'm going to do it. And I did. I walked across from um, from embankment to, uh, to Waterloo. Yeah. All, all across the water. And it wasn't even frozen. It wasn't even mm. frozen. And so, but what about the water yeah. into wine? Yes. Um, when I knew I could change water into wine, that's a good question. That was when um, Phoebe Waller-Bridge yes. said that she thought what I said about free speech was interesting oh, free on, speech. on the tweet when she gave me a little heart. That's when I turned the water into wine, which, which was nice because yeah. we were stranded out. Oh, where was it? Thirsk? thirsk? It was a gig after Thirsk, and mm -hmm. I was actually suffering from legitimate thirst. <laughs> and would you believe it? Those little Yorkshire towns, they just don't understand the concept of keeping your store open mm. long enough to, uh, yeah. to, get your, uh, to get your bottle of rose afterwards. So um, okay. there was the tap Same water thing. in the hotel room, yeah. and I thought, wait a second. I've just gotten a little heart and a retweet from the lady behind Fleabag. Yeah. I'll turn the water into wine. And it yeah. flowed all night long. Awesome. That'd be the kind of tap I'd like because that'd be so funny to see that stuff come out instead of water. That's awesome. Anyway, listen, guys, this has been so, so awesome. Thank you so much for doing the comedy podcast. And thank you guys, as always, for listening to the comedy podcast. I'm your host, Rick Sheridan. If you want to support the comedy podcast, please go to patreon.com stroke Will Franken. Hey, I don't know what that has to do with me, Rick Sheridan, and the comedy podcast, but you know what, guys? I'm only a humble servant of the comedy guy. <laughs>